If you have moved abroad to pursue a change in your personal and professional life in a country that is not your own, what are you? Well, as my teacher at uni used to say, it depends. But today we're not diving into the depths of philosophy to find the higher truth, but exploring the very practical implication of few simple words. Some people prefer to be called expat and totally refuse to be called immigrants. Why? What is the difference? In today's video, we'll find out. But first, a bit of context. Hi everyone, my name is Luis and welcome to another Intercool video. If you're new here, please consider subscribing by clicking the button which is somewhere around here and hit the notification bell so you are notified every time I release a new video just like this one. You don't want to miss it. And now, to the video. Do words mean anything? Well, it's a broad philosophical question that I'm not very qualified to actually discuss in depth. The thing is, if you are a Latino who moved to, let's say, Canada, you are an immigrant. But if you are a European with Caucasian features living in Shenzhen or in Bangkok, then you belong to a more upgraded group of individuals. You are an expat. It doesn't really matter, right? Perhaps it does. The Oxford Dictionary defined expat as a person living in a country that is not their own, and the word stems from the Latin expatriate, with ex meaning out and patria meaning native country. But the difference is not purely semantic. For example, are made expats? Yes, they are. Are construction workers in Singapore or the UAE that you see on the building sites expats? Yes. They are. An expatriate is a legally working individual who resides temporarily in a country of which they are not a citizen, in order to accomplish a career-related goal, regardless of their pay or skill level. Someone who has relocated abroad either by an organization, by themselves, or been directly employed by their host country. But this is exactly where the theory deviates from the real applications. In practice, that's not really how most of us define expat, both in academia and among the general population. When they talk about expatriates, they're talking about rich, educated, developed elites. Others are just migrants or immigrants. But logically, that's not the correct way to look at these things. Immigrant, again using the Oxford Dictionary definition, is a person who has come to live permanently in a country that is not their own. Wait, I've seen this before. It's pretty much the same. Or perhaps it's about the length of the stay or the origin of the individual. According to Malte Zieg, founder and co-CEO of Internations, the world's largest expat network with 2.5 million members in 390 cities around the world, whether someone is an expat or not does not depend on the origin. It's about the motivations behind their decision to move abroad, he says. For people that we today call expat, living abroad is rather a lifestyle choice than burn out of economic necessity or dire circumstances in their home country, such as oppression or persecution. That is what differentiates them from refugees or economic migrants, but not their origin, their income or the length of their stay. As more of us live out of the globalization of the world populations and our travel behaviors and patterns shift, the definitions need to be reviewed and revised to be a more accurate representation of this current reality. The reality is Africans are immigrants. Arabs are immigrants, Asians are immigrants, however Europeans are expats because they cannot be at the same level as other ethnicities. They are a superior group. Immigrant is a term set aside for inferior races. Just think about this, when did you last hear about an Indian in France, a Polish worker in Britain or indeed a Syrian refugee referred to as expat? The word expat conjures up post-colonial images of well-off foreigners who have made some kind of comfortable and temporary country switch. The phenomenon is not only prevalent in Asia, it's the same in Africa, in America and in Europe. For example, top African professionals going to work in Europe are not expats, they are just immigrants. Period. An African migrant worker says, I work for a multinational organization both in the private and public sectors, and being black or colored doesn't gain me the term expat. I'm a highly qualified immigrant, as they call me, to be politically correct. But the differences do not end there. Even in Europe, I mean within Europe, there are differences. There are different types of Europe. During the EU referendum, some argued there are more than a million UK expats in Spain alone. 
probably in the same sentence they would add it is uncertain what would happen to millions of european immigrants currently living in the uk interesting so are those roughly 3 million eu residents in the uk immigrants and the british citizens in the mediterranean lands expats you decide your answer meanwhile census and studies reveal that few of those uk residents immigrants in spain for instance are actual workers of any kind they are retirees while most spaniards french portuguese immigrants in the uk are actually working and a lot of them just as a career choice Some may argue saying, well, I think people make too much fuss about the word expat. As long as it is used in its neutral way, it should be fine. Well, the question is, do words actually have a neutral sense? If that is the case, well, let's look into the following expressions. A nomad is a member of a community that moves with its animal from place to place. It's mostly used to characterize, you know, other and the developed, slightly uncivilized and even perhaps barbaric people. We're talking about this. But if you hear a nomad professional or nomad with a picture like this, it's a quite different concept, isn't it? Even the word vagabond, a person who has no home or job and who travels from place to place. But if you say you are a modern vagabond or a vagabond 2.0, it has a totally different connotation. It means someone who follows his dreams and travels the world harvesting experiences, especially if you add a backpack and an Apple laptop to the mix. Vagabond, nomad, they are becoming romanticized expressions of educated, globally aware, experienced, hungry people who decide not to follow the norm and build for themselves a life and a career embodied in embracing the global mobility and modern technology. Doesn't it sound beautiful? Indeed. And it is as bizarre as European, supposedly expats, immigrating to America and then they're complaining about South American immigrants, a lot of them actually expats. So words have meanings, the meanings we assign to them. In other words, the meaning is not inherent to the symbols themselves. Meaning is constructed in the minds of the people who use the words to communicate. Yes, it's true. Expats face different and lesser challenges than most other immigrants. Saying expat is not an attempt to set one set of immigrants above the other. It shouldn't be. It should be used as an acknowledgement that the immigrant experience varies enormously. And it makes sense to use it, if it is used fairly. If you think about it, then lots of Spaniards, Portuguese or French and Indians moving to the UK and many Mexicans who choose to move to the US might then easily be transferred from the immigrant dirty package to the expat Gucci bag. Let's clarify this. Expats are immigrants too, just a different type of immigrant. Alright, just to recap, expat is a term normally reserved exclusively for Western white people going to work abroad. But perhaps it's time to deconstruct this outdated worldview, open the gates and allow other people in. Words have meaning and we cannot argue that they will always be used harmlessly. They come indeed loaded with connotation, hidden and sometimes not so hidden meanings. Expats are a group of immigrants who have made a choice to move to a different country for different reasons. So anybody meeting that criteria should fairly be considered as such and enjoy all the goodness that comes with it because sadly the negatives are already assumed just by being an immigrant. And to be honest, a lot of people already accept this, but many others, especially from the okay, very generalized West, don't want to be called immigrants. Exploring the reasons why those people wouldn't like to be immigrants will tell us a lot about the hidden meanings behind the terms, things that those people don't want to be part of. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching. If you have come this far, you are a true supporter and I thank you very, very much. All I need to ask you is please subscribe if you still haven't, share the video, leave a comment about today's topic or if you think that my head is getting out of control or anything else. And as I always say, stay cool and I'll see you next time.